Pierce Brosnan may not be interested in who might replace Daniel Craig as James Bond after his final bow in No Time to Die, but fans certainly do. And with the role currently vacant, they have once again ignited the age-old debate about who played the best Bond. While there are numerous different ways to discern the best Bond actor, only one can be the most financially successful. Using data from the numbers, all six James Bond actors, from Connery to Craig, can be ranked by their box office average during their stint as the character. 6 6 George Lazenby 1 film minus $82 million George Lazenby was the second man to take on the mantle of James Bond, replacing Sean Connery for the 1969 film on Her Majesty's Secret Service following Connery's falling out with the production company behind the franchise. Lazenby's tenure would prove the shortest of all the Bond actors, only lasting for one film. The actor made it clear prior to the premiere of his debut outing as 007 that he would not be returning for any future installments, wishing to perform in other roles instead. On Her Majesty's Secret Service underperformed at the box office, with many fans still lukewarm to the idea of an actor other than Connery as 007. Mixed reviews only added to the film's financial problems, though many fans have warmed to it as the decades passed, with Lazenby's sole film in the franchise now lauded as one of the best. Despite the film's newly realized popularity, Lazenby remains the lowest-earning Bond actor. 5 6 Sean Connery 6 Films minus $105,361,170 Connery is many fans' go-to pick for their favorite James Bond actor. As the first man to take on the role, the Scottish actor debuted as James Bond in 1962's Drive. No. He would go on to appear in four additional films before falling out with the studio and quitting the franchise. After Lazenby's turn as Bond underperformed at the box office, Connery was brought back in 1971 for a sixth and final film, Diamonds Are Forever, though he would also later appear in the unauthorized film Never Say Never Again. Connery's time as Bond was immensely successful, earning copious props for the box office of the 60s and 70s. While inflation has led Connery to be ranked under many of his successors in terms of box office earnings, his stint as the British secret agent was anything but a financial flop. In fact, given that his return greatly boosted the franchise's profits, Connery's place as Bond seems directly correlated with the series' early success. 4 6 Roger Moore 7 Films minus $149,272,565 Roger Moore's stint as James Bond is filled with terrific one-liners and memorable gadgets. Over the course of 12 years, Moore appeared in seven films as 007, beginning in 1973 with Live and Let Die and ending with 1985's A View to a Kill. The actor would eventually retire from the role, believing that he had grown too old to continue with the series. Moore's time as James Bond was quite successful, even surpassing the box office numbers of Sean Connery. By the time that Moore took over the role, fans had grown more accustomed to the idea of a new actor playing James Bond and, thanks to a strong start with Live and Let Die, the third Bond actor would enjoy a long and celebrated tenure in the franchise. 3 6 Timothy Dalton 2 Films minus $173,683,507 Following Moore's departure from the role, Timothy Dalton would become a unique addition to the Bond pantheon. As the fourth actor to play the character, Dalton would appear in two films of the franchise, beginning with 1987's The Living Daylights and ending with License to Kill in 1989. 
while the actor was supposedly set to appear in a third film, delays due to legal issues allowed him to exit the franchise, which would remain dormant for another six years until Brosnan was brought in as the fifth Bond. Despite only appearing in two films as the iconic British secret agent, Dalton proved to be a very financially successful Bond. Both The Living Daylights and License to Kill performed immensely well at the worldwide box office despite mixed reviews from critics, though certain entries from his predecessors had earned even more. Nevertheless, the consistency of Dalton's box office profits allowed him to ascend above all three of his predecessors in terms of average earnings. Two sixths Pierce Brosnan four films minus three hundred seventy two million four hundred one thousand seven hundred fifty four dollars Brosnan was the Bond of the 1990s, whose time in the franchise is defined by campy action sequences, ridiculous gadgets, and standout supporting Bond characters. The actor made his debut in the 1995 film Goldeneye, directed by Martin Campbell. Brosnan's tenure in the role would comprise of four films, which came to an end with 2002's critically panned Die Another Day, the failure of which would result in a complete rebooting of the franchise and Brosnan being replaced. Brosnan had a leg up on his predecessors in terms of box office gross due to the increased excitement for action films in the 90s, with each of his films becoming the highest grossing Bond film ever at the time of its release. After the success of GoldenEye, fans were eager to see where the franchise might go with Brosnan's follow-up movies. While Craig's films would later dethrone Die Another Day as the most profitable Bond film, Brosnan's time as the character certainly brought new financial success to the franchise. One sixth Daniel Craig five films minus seven hundred eighty seven million two hundred twenty nine thousand six hundred twenty seven dollars Craig has enjoyed the longest tenure out of any actor to play James Bond in film. First appearing in 2006's Casino Royale, Craig became the first and so far only Bond in the newly rebooted franchise. Fans quickly fell in love with the new take, leading Craig to return for several more sequels over the course of 15 years, eventually retiring from the role with 2021's No Time to Die. The popularity of the Bond franchise exploded during Craig's tenure, with the films earning more money at the box office than ever before. In fact, the actor's third and fourth appearances as the character, Skyfall and Spectre, each broke the $1 billion benchmark, becoming the first films in the franchise to do so without adjusting for inflation. Skyfall remains the highest-earning Bond film ever released, with its successors dipping in total gross, but remaining incredibly successful. With five films under his belt, Craig remains undisputed as the most lucrative James Bond.